Hi everyone. Today we are going to be looking at Project for the Web. It is a recently deployed project management tool that Microsoft produced. And there has been a change in licensing recently. There is now a Project Plan 1, which provides you the access to Project for the Web. There is also Project Plan 3 and Project Plan 5, which give you access to Project for the Web. In addition to that, you also can access Project Online Environment. So when you click on your project tile from your O365 portal, it will bring you here to the project homepage. Here is where you can see all of your recent projects, any projects that have been shared with you, any projects that have been created by you. And you also have the option to pin some up here as your favorites. And you can see if we want to pin one up here, we click here and we can either add or remove it from our list here, or we can promote it to our favorite section right here just brings it up there. So if you have the most frequent projects you're working on, you can populate it there. You can remove it from my projects, from my favorites up there. And you can see here in the type that I do have one right here called just project. And this is project for the web project. And above it is a PWA project. So you can see that if you land on your project homepage, there is that distinction between the two. So you can see where the point of origin is for the project. So to create a new project, I'm going to click on add new, uh, add blank project up here, and it will generate it for me. Um, project for the web is entirely web based, so there is not a desktop application that goes along with it. So your schedule, your duration, your everything, your updates will be done directly in a web based browser. So you can see when it loads me here. I have an untitled project. My start and finish dates are the same, which is today. And then I have the option to create my task list here. I'm going to go ahead and click on my untitled project. I'm going to name this marketing pro project. Here is where I can list the project manager. By default, it is me since I'm the one who create, created this project. I can go ahead and click on X here and I can add in somebody else if I would like to. But I'm going to go ahead and leave this to be myself. But this is a required field. I need there. It does need to be somebody here that is listed. You can see if I do remove that, it does let you know that that field is required. Here's where I can list my start date if for some for the for example, the start date is not today. I can say that it is going to be sometime in the future. And here is where you can see these are automatically calculated from the plan. I can see the finish dates and I can see the duration for my schedule. And here is where I can define what calendar that I want to have it be applied to. I just use the default for right now. And in another video, I will walk through how to create different calendars that you can use in Project for the Web. I'm going to go ahead and X this. And so right now I am in my grid view. Here is where I can see the different tasks that I I'm going to create. I can see a couple of different data points about them. So I am just going to go ahead and create uh, a very, very basic outline for my schedule here. This has a couple of tasks and one milestone. You can promote different tasks. So I'm going to add in one here. I'm going to go ahead and insert a task above it. And I'm going to insert in my summary task. And any of the tasks underneath it, I'm going to say I want to make it a subtask of the task above it. So you can see once I do that for all of them, they all go underneath of the summary task here. So here, uh, by default, it lets you see your task name, who the task is assigned to, and the duration. But there is an add column here. And here you can see that you can see the percent complete, um, the bucket, the dependencies, the effort, or the work as it was formerly known, the finish date, the outline number, and the start date for these tasks. So I'm going to go ahead and add in a couple of additional fields, such as effort, I'm in percent complete here, and my depends on column. So I'm going to go ahead and add in some durations for my tasks. I'm going to add in a three day duration for task one, two days for that, and a four day for that one. So since my tasks are currently not linked in any kind of finished start relationship or they're not linked in any manner, the duration here is just my longest duration, which is four days because it assumes that all of these tasks are going to take place starting at the same time. So I'm going to go ahead and assign some resources here. Um, I'm going to click on assign task to a resource. And by default, I am the only person on this team. Um, I can assign this task to myself. And when I do that, it will automatically generate some effort. Project for the Web does use the typical eight hours of work per day for a resource by default. And so it does update that, just, not, um, just updates it there for me. 
So I'm going to come here. I'm going to add another resource. And if I'd like to add somebody who is not yet on my project team, I'm just going to type in their name. As long as they are in the O365 environment as a user, then I'll be able to populate them here. So once I add somebody new to my project, I do get prompted here. I can eat, um, to connect my project to a group. That way, anybody else that I add will have access um, to everything that involving this project. So here you can see I can create a new group. It does uh, bring up a brand new group here for me. If I click a drop down, I can change a couple of the different data points about it. I can create a private or a public. I'm going to go ahead and keep it as private. Or if you have some existing groups that you would like to link it to, you can go ahead and add it to an existing group there. For today, we are going to create a brand new group for this project. So I'm going to click Create and Assign. And so once I do that, you can see up here in the upper right hand corner, it now tells me that there are two group members for this project. And if I click on it, I can see the names here and I can also add in some additional users in there. So if I want to add in some additional users to either have access to my schedule or as resources, I can add them in here. Uh, everybody who does have access to the schedule will come and they will be able to see the same view that I see here. So whether I'm Daniel or I'm Barbara, if I come into this project, I will see this same view, all of the tasks and all of the data points about them. So I'm going to go ahead and add a couple of different resources here to my task number three. And you can see it does do some math and calculate out some dates there for me and some effort. And then for my milestone, of course, we have a zero day duration for that. So there, they, you do have the option to see your tasks in a board view. Um, there are a couple of different buckets of groupings that you can have. By default, there is the progress grouping. And when you do move tiles from one page to the next, you see the progress change for that. Uh, so for example, if I have my task one here, and I do want to move it to my in progress. It updates that percent complete right here to show me that. Once it's completed, I'm going to move it to my completed bucket here, and it does have 100% there. Um, it is noted by a checkbox and a line through, which is also reflected in your grid view here. So you can see 0%. We do have our percent complete column here. It's 100%, which also rolls up to this total summary task up there. We're going to go ahead and move this guy back over here. And we're going to go to the timeline view. Here is where you'll be able to see your time phased or your Gantt for the tasks in your schedule. Um, right now, all of our tasks do start on the same day. So if I hover over it, it does give you the beginning and finish date for it. So for my summary task, you can see it here. And for all the different ones, if you hover, it gives you that date up there at the top. So this is the way I found to create dependencies that's been the easiest is in the timeline view here. And you can see when I hover over a bar for task one, for example, I have a blue dot at the beginning and the end of my schedule. Here is where I can create those relationships. I'm just going to drag my dot from the end of one to two, from the end of two to three. I have to drag it actually to the dot itself. Come on. Does not like that. There we go. And then we're going to add it from our task three to the dot for milestone one. Once that happens, it does push out the dates for my summary task. It does take the very beginning of the task one all the way through the ending or milestone of uh, my series here. If I come back to my grid over here, everything is updated very dynamically. So once I update it here, you can see it changes the duration since these are a first task one, fast task one, now task two. It does add all of this up to give me my data points there. Um, same with my effort. And in the depends on column, you can see it does note what task all of these depend on. So Project for the Web is web-based, but we can also view all of the different projects that I have created or anybody else that has access uh, to this project for the web in Power Apps. So I go to make.powerapps.com, and here by default, there is a project app. So I'm going to go ahead and click on that, and it is a Dynamics platform. You can see up in the URL, it does have a CRM.Dynamics, and right here is what is listed as your organization's ID. So if you do like to do any reporting or anything, this is the ID that you'll need to do that. And Microsoft did release a, a Power BI content pack that relates to Project for the Web, which we will do in another video as well. 
So once I come here straight from Power Apps, I am landed on a page that shows me my projects. So you can see I have three different projects here. I have some data, different data points I can view about them. I have my start date, my finish date, and then I do have a ribbon up here at the top. And we'll go through these different options and a couple of other following videos on how to do the Excel templates and a couple of different things like that. So I'm going to go ahead and click on my marketing project here. And here's where I can get to the details about this specific project. I have a summary bucket here, and it does have that dynamics feel. I do have a bucket for my general information, a bucket for estimates, a bucket for actuals. And you can add different entities here to capture different pieces of information about your projects. Uh, for example, I have this one here for project phase. This is not an out of the box field. It's one that we have added to our environment here. So I'm gonna go ahead and update that. Same with department here and for project program. We're going to put that here. And then here again, I'm listed as the manager. And then, then when this project was last updated, I can also change my template here. And then in the tasks tab over here is where you can see your schedule in the same format in the same fashion as you did in the browser. And um, if we open up our schedule again back over here, it does look exactly the same, only this has embedded it within the Dynamics platform in which this project lives. Uh, we also have the issues and risks here, which is not um, a native feature in there. It's something that we have built out and we will be showing you how to do that in a couple of follow up videos here. So I hope you have enjoyed your, your walkthrough pro project for the web and we will be creating more videos as we continue to build out our environment here. So please stay tuned. Have a good day.